Well, now we turn to uh, Mr. Bill Davis. Bill has done this before, but this time he is building a rail scale models uh, tobacco barn. And this is uh, another beautiful kit. Uh, and I hope that uh, a lot of you are going to be building along with, uh, uh, with Bill. Bill, welcome. Okay, so in, in part one, we uh, prepped the wood for the, this, uh, this uh, project. And we, uh, by the way, we got, we got tobacco barn on the screen, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, and uh, I, I turned the, the walls around and uh, laid my own battens instead of using the kits provided battens, uh, just because I didn't feel they were correct uh, widthwise for O scale. Uh, there was nothing wrong with using them. I just, they just didn't satisfy my, my particular need. So one of the problems that I ran into was the wood grain on one of the walls. Uh, you notice here how the, the way the grain of the, of the, the wood that was used uh, is um, uh, over just, just really too heavy and it doesn't look prototypical at all. So I decided what I would do is uh, paint this a weathered out uh, paint on this one wall that they, in the process of building the building or whatever, they painted this one wall and, and then didn't paint the other ones. Uh, so what I did was, is I dry brushed uh, craft paints or white craft paint on the walls um, I did it partly by brushing, partly by dabbing it on uh, to get the effect of um, an old weathered out white paint that was on there. Then I went back with uh, some Bragdon chalks and some um, some Bragdon chalks and some uh, uh, black wash that I have, and it came out looking like that, which I think looks a whole lot better than what it looked like with that heavy grain that it was crossing through the different boards, which, which wouldn't happen in real life. So the next project part of the thing was to assemble the four walls. Um, the kits suggest that if you use the, the way the kit was provided, uh, suggest that you put a, a piece of 1 16th square in each corner. Uh, I chose not to do that because of the way I laid out the, the way the, um, supports were laid out, um, <clears throat> uh, the way the supports were laid out, I just put the, put the corners together and then I added battens to the corners. Where's my mouse? Battens here to the corner. Um, I used one by six on three of the, of the corners and I didn't have enough of that. So I used a one by four in the fourth corner, which fine. So this is the, the wall we did the tar paper on. This is the wall that we painted. And then the other walls, I didn't, I didn't do any kind of uh, painting on them and stuff. I just left them in the, uh, the, the unpainted wood look. And this is your fourth corner. As, as you can see, here's the battens that we're putting the corners to meet, meet up. And the fourth view. I felt that, um, I wanted good and solid, so I added um, pieces of triangle uh, wood into the corners here so that it would be stay good and square. Um, I wasn't worried about getting too much glue anywhere inside here. I had a little trouble with a couple of corners here, like here. So I just loaded it down with some CA glue to, to, uh, to finish it off there. Okay, now there's a brick foundation on this building. And so um, I decided I was going to paint that, but I didn't want the bricks to all be one color. So I, uh, I painted it all with a, a craft paint red, and then I went back with uh, a black and a, a darker red and a, another red tone there. But when it came time to do the, uh, the uh, mortar lines, I used a uh, oil paint. So you had water-based paints for this, and by using an oil paint, uh, the oil paint didn't attack the water-based paint. And so you didn't have a problem with wiping out the, the details you put into it, yeah, the foundation. Doors and windows. So the kit came with uh, the doors and windows cut out of a more like a masonite looking color 
uh, laser material. So I didn't want them to be a painted door. So I needed to get the, that darker brown to look more like the raw wood color of the rest of the kit. So I first uh, painted each one of those uh, parts with uh, Tamiya uh, wood deck tan. Once that was done, I went back with uh, various washes uh, to get a weathered tone that I was after that matched the rest of the building's weather tones. And these are the doors when they're finished. Uh, the hinges here are from Grantline. I cut them down and put them in there. Uh, I felt it needed some kind of way to keep the doors closed. So I made this little latch across here with zero fifteen thousandths wire. And I decided to put a bunch of dirt in the bottom down here that had been kicked up on it or blown up on it or whatever, the bottom of the door. And so that pretty much just completes the door. But you notice that these wooden pieces here now that were so dark uh, in the laser cut look really close to the rest of the wooden pieces around it. And so that's, that was the point of starting off by taking in and putting a, a subcoat of um, Tamiya uh, wood deck tan and then going from there to weather it up to match the rest. Also, you can see the, the brickwork uh, was after I cleaned off all the excess uh, oil wash there that the mortar lines look pretty good and stuff. Okay, so not a lot tonight, but that's it so far. Uh, this is what it looks like at this point. Now, one more thing here, this little filler here on the door, on the, on the walls. Um, let's see if I got a, no. Yeah, this hole here. Uh, this hole here, they had a piece of that uh, masonite looking material there. So I added some strips behind here so that when I put it in there, it would have something to support it because there was nothing to support it. So I'll go back into the last picture here. You can see that it just inserts just slightly, but if you look over here, here's the little support pieces that are behind here to hold it in place. Um, so that's pretty much it. The next time we're out here, we're gonna be doing the, uh, the roof. Uh, this, he has a design for a tar paper roof. And I haven't decided, uh, in part one, I showed you some various barns in my area here. And the one at our museum, has the uh, awning around the side here. I don't know why they did it that way. They had plenty of room to put it in the front, but that's why they put it in the side. And I don't know if that would be advantageous to put it in the side there or put it on the front here. So we'll decide next week uh, where we put the awning. But that is where we're at this point. Um, that's it, guys. Any questions? Well, Bill, I just got a comment. I think your door looks fantastic. I, I mean, I'm not sure that anybody could ever ever get a, a better looking door. How the weathering that you did and starting with the uh, the gray, I think that's just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. All Anything right, so we'll look, forward, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank yeah. you so very much. All right. Good.